Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and today I want to talk to you about The Blurry Years by Eleanor Kreisman. This book was published in 2018, and I have to tell you something. I was never into Florida fiction, even though I grew up there. It's probably because I grew up there and I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, but now that I've moved away, and well, very far away, now that I live in the UK, I am so interested in Florida. Isn't that weird how that happens? So while I was visiting home, I saw this book and I was like suddenly very interested and I love the cover and like the whole thing is just nice. I'll talk about that later. But um, I thought, you know what, why not? I'm now a lot more inspired to write about Florida. So I thought maybe I should read um, a book set in Florida for once instead of you know, trying to get away from them so much. So, this book I read in one day, basically. Um, and I just, like, I couldn't stop. It was, it was like being at home again. And I lit this candle that I have behind me. There's barely any of it left, but it reminds me of Florida so much. It just smells like that sun and sand and sunscreen smell, you know? And I got it at Ikea. It's just, like, as soon as I light it, I feel like I'm back there. So that's wonderful. So I was lying in my bed in the sunlight, which actually is happening now in Scotland. We're getting sun. It's the most insane feeling because it was gray for so long. And now it's just, like, blue skies, sunshine every day. So I sunbathed with the cats. So we were doing that, and I was reading this book, and I just felt, like, completely transported. So let me read you a few things that I liked. Um, first, this quote that is at the beginning of the book. It's one of those, you know. It says, the stain of place hangs on not as a birthright, but as a sort of artifice, a bit of cosmetic. And that's from Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. And I, I just really loved that because I think so much about place and, you know, my place in the world, where do I want to be? Um, how has, how have I been affected by the place where I grew up, which is Florida, um, on the Gulf Coast. So like always surrounded by beach and tourists and never able to escape the sun 24-7. Well, I guess it doesn't shine 24 hours a day, but you know what I mean? It is always hot in Florida day and night. Um, we get like one nice month, which is January but the rest of the time it's pretty brutal. And I just felt like I was back there when I was reading this. The descriptions are so simple and so vivid. Like this book is only 171 pages and she said so much in that time. And I just love when writers are able to do that. So let me just read a few things. You know how I am. I love the um, parent and child dynamic in this book because it deals mostly with the main character, Callie, living with her mother, who is an alcoholic, and um, you really don't need this like huge cast of characters because it's, it's mainly focused on their relationship, which I find just like riveting. When you can write characters and relationships that are that strong, without even that much dialogue, because I'd say a lot of the book is narration and um, interior thoughts, you guys know me. That is what I love. I love character studies. I love coming of age stories. I just, this is great. So, um, I'll just read like some lines that I like. There was something about my mom that made me always want to be on her side, even when it made me feel guilty. I thought that was a good example of parent-child dynamic. Del had once told me, had told me once, that my mom bragged about me, that she said I was no trouble at all. I didn't say anything when Del told me, but I had felt a blush rising to the surface of my skin that I couldn't help, like trying to push yourself under the surface of a pool and floating back up to the top despite your churning. There's a lot of really great, like, analogies in this book that are just so, you know, flawlessly thrown in there, because you know when you read books sometimes in there, like really forced, like they're forcing the metaphors and analogies and similes and all those fun things. Um, but they really just work very well here. 
Sometimes it felt as if my life was just a series of moments where I hadn't realized I was holding my breath until I let it out. Does anybody feel like that all the time? I do. Especially when I'm filming. I still get so nervous. But thanks for watching. I'm glad you're still here. In spite of, like, some of the weird, crazy comments that I get, some people are mean. But I'm glad most of you are very nice. Oh, I just love this description. Um, we didn't go hungry, but I missed certain things. I missed standing next to my mom at the stove, listening to the sizzle of the ground beef hitting the pan, sneaking a lick of the seasoning before she poured out the rest of the packet. I missed the heavy plates with the painted flowers on the rim that I used to trace with my fork between bites. I missed drinking milk in the mornings, but I didn't tell her any of that. I love a good list of memories, feelings, sensations, images, anything. Just give me like a nice list. And I like to write those too. That's one of my favorite things to write. I wanted to stop driving, even if where we stopped wasn't home. I wanted my world to narrow to one point again, to stay the same in front of my eyes. I wanted the landscape to stop blurring as we sped by life instead of living it. We were in limbo. Anywhere with even one familiar thing, one room with a solid floor under my feet, would have felt, if not like home, like some place I could get used to. Again, this, this theme of home, and especially it's, it's very poignant for me because I come from Florida, so I know this kind of weird relationship that um, probably a lot of us have with our state where we want to just get away, just to be anywhere other than that place, but also, you know, we know because we're told so much that it's a desirable place to be, like, obviously it's a huge vacation spot, everybody wants to come to Florida, so I always grew up telling people, like, why would you want to be there, don't come to Florida for vacation, it's hot, it's flat, it's boring, and now that I'm away, when I go back to visit, it's like this <laughs> tropical paradise, and... It's so different to anything that I have around me now in the UK um, that I do miss it. Which is something, if you knew me growing up, you'd be very shocked to hear me say, because I always wanted to leave. Life is funny. Oh, I always have to read any passage about cockroaches because... That's like a staple in my childhood. Oh. And um, just because I don't know who watches this channel, I don't know if there's like kids or anything, I just cut out um, cursing even though I'm totally all for it and love it. But I'm just gonna do like a little like that if I cut out a curse word. Just so you know, I don't wanna like misquote, but don't know who's out there. God, that house was filthy. 10 girls, four bedrooms, two couches, the roaches. You know in Florida, they have these roaches called palmetto bugs. They're huge, first of all, but they can fly, too. They were all over that house. We'd smack them out of the air with flip-flops. Oh, so many memories. So many memories of the roaches. There was this one drawer in the kitchen, and every time we opened it, there was a roach in there. It didn't matter how many times you killed the thing. There would always be a roach in that one drawer. And it was the drawer with, like, the pot holders in it and, like, the oven mitts. <laughs> it just got to the point where you'd be afraid to cook or do anything that involved that drawer. <laughs> and sometimes they were in the car. And these things, like, it doesn't mean, like, a lot of people have this association, like, cockroaches equals dirty. It just means Florida. Like, they're just everywhere, and you can't really fully stop them once they've gotten started. So they were in our car a few times. I had one recently, even last year, when I was still living in Florida, and a cockroach, like, fell out of a tree and into my car as I opened the door in my own driveway, so it just, and then it was there, and I could not find it for days, oh my god, and then it just disappeared. It's like at a certain point you just have to go, all right, I am living in this car with this cockroach, it's going to be in this car no matter what I do. Um, and you'd see it sometimes, and you just, you'd always be too slow to catch it. Always. And it could be anywhere, inside the mechanisms of the car seats. So you'd learn to drive with your leg like all the way up here and um, well that's if you have an automatic car. 
And so you have like just your toe on the gas pedal. It was so dangerous and so scary. Anyway, I had to I had to read that. Cockroaches. They're the absolute worst. And I don't know why I'm so scared of them, but it's like that's just a thing. I know they're just bugs, they're just doing their own thing. But I just can't. Okay. We'll move on. I tried to picture the days ahead, what would happen when we pulled out of the driveway. Everything outside would begin to blur again, and it would feel familiar, which made me intensely sad that a blur was something I could get used to. I absolutely love that idea um, throughout this book of, of childhood being blurry. Um, it's like things being out of your control makes them not as substantial. Because there's nothing when you're a kid that you can really like hold on to and say, I. I can control that, I can decide which way this goes. Um, you really, you really can't until a certain age. And it can be really scary, and I don't think that's talked about very much. Ooh, okay, this is something that I just have to touch on because I have not heard a thunderstorm in like eight months which is, I think, how long I've lived here. There's just no thunderstorms. And um, I had to be informed that that has to do with like heat, like the heat in the air, which I never knew because in Florida it's always hot, so we always have thunderstorms. So I just thought it was like a UK thing that they don't have thunderstorms. I know, I should go back to seventh grade science class. But I miss it so much. So I, I love this passage. The sky bruised purple and black out of the living room window, lightning flashing through the darkness. The rain splattered on the window pane, blowing sideways from the wind, and the cracks of thunder sent a jolt to my heart each time. I didn't realize how much I had missed these summer storms, the ones where the sky sucked away the light, so it was dark at 3 p.m. and the rain pelted your skin so hard it hurt. We have the best storms in Florida. Like, we're called the Sunshine State, but I think we're also the lightning capital. Um, there's so and, and that means like awesome thunder and I remember so many days um, driving home from work and like on the interstate and the sky would just go black and there would be this curtain of rain that would come down and suddenly you can't see anything you're totally blind and everybody just starts going like five miles per hour and it gets real real sketchy um, but it's like just the coolest thing are storms, especially when you're at home, curled up with a book and a cat or two, and um, you're not in any danger, then it's especially fun. Uh, but it's awesome, like our storms just start and they're crazy and then they go away and then it's like blue skies again and everything's just like hot and sizzling, like the ground is just steaming because it's so warm. And I'm talking about that like it's a good thing, I used to hate the heat, it's crazy. Okay, a few more. Oh. The skin on my back and shoulders peeled off in lazy strips for days. That's from a sunburn. I can't tell you the, the intensity of a Florida sunburn, especially a Disney World sunburn. If you do not put on your sunscreen when you go to Disney, you have got something coming to you. Like, seriously, people, be careful. Just a warning, I mean, like, that sun, it's something about the atmosphere at Disney that, like, intensifies all weather. The heat there is extra hot, the cold there is extra cold, the rain there is extra rainy. So just always be prepared for that. Please wear sunscreen. It's So many um, people from places like the UK, where they don't get as much sun, go to Disney, and they drink Coke all day, and they don't wear sunscreen. And then they pass out from dehydration, and they're complete lobsters the next day. So, please, please be careful. It is so real in Florida. Oh, this passage is just like... It's just like my childhood, in a nutshell. Because I spent so much time in the pool, poolside, at the beach, um, in the water. Just a lot of water. So, I found a deck chair with all the vinyl strips intact and spread my towel over it, wincing slightly at the heat coming off of 
the salmon-colored concrete that made the bottoms of my bare feet prickle with pain. I liked to lay out until I got so hot I felt like I would faint, until sweat soaked my hairline and trickled down the center of my chest. Then I'd jump straight into the deep end. It felt better that way, when I'd denied myself of something for as long as I could stand it before going in. Before giving in, sorry. Um, I used to do that. Except I did it more with um, sitting in the hot tub and just like baking because it's already, you know, like 95 degrees outside and you're sweating anyway, but sitting in the hot tub and then getting out, running really fast to the pool and jumping straight into the deep end and it was like a shock of like cold water, even though it was heated, it was still like very cold compared to the hot tub. I used to do that so much. Like so much of my childhood just came back to me reading this book, so thank you, Eleanor Kreisman. It really... <laughs> It was a pleasure reading this. Oh, this is sad. I wasn't crying because I was hurt. I was crying because he was so nice. It was weird how that could make you cry. Just someone being nice, nice to you when you didn't even deserve it. Oh, that one hit close to home. And I'll just read one more. Oh, we're making good time. Okay, this is just like a lovely passage to end on here. It was like how dust gathered in the corners of a room, and you didn't notice it or think about it until one day you decided to move the furniture or something, and then, then excuse my reading today, and then it was all there, clumped and dirty, and no matter how many times you tried to sweep it all up, there was always a little bit that wouldn't go away, and you had to sweep it back under the sofa where it was before, but now you knew it was there, and the floor always felt gritty under your feet from then on. And she's talking about, like, memories of your life. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with my reading. It's, you know, being in isolation, I don't think I'm talking as much as I used to. Um, like, if I get a phone call, I'm like, uh, uh hi. <laughs> and I can't remember how to use my voice. So, but that's no excuse. I'm always pretty, like, sketchy with reading out loud on camera. So I also wanted to say real quick how much I love this physical book. It's just so nice. Um, I'm a big fan of these paperbacks that do this. Like it's a hardcover, like it's a dust jacket, but it's not because it's attached. Um, so this is published by Two Dollar Radio, and their little tagline is, Books Too Loud to Ignore. And um, I've never heard of them before, but I just love, like, everything about the design of this book. Like, look at the, um, copyright page. It's so artistic. Um, it tells you, uh, oh yeah, some recommended locations for reading the blurry years. Curled up in the window seat of a cross-country flight, at a quiet bar on a week weekday afternoon, on the couch in an apartment you're house-sitting after you've brought in the mail and watered the plants in the passenger seat of a sandy car with your feet on the dashboard, while someone you love enough to be quiet with is driving you home. Pretty much anywhere because books are portable and the perfect technology. <clears throat> so obviously those are all things that we can't do right now. Um, unfortunately. But I wonder if in like the other books that they have published, if those recommended reading locations are different. I'm very, very curious. It's just so nice. Um, like, it tells you what paper it's printed on, and, um, how it's, it says it's ancient forest friendly. Ooh. I just like that. I'm gonna have to look into more of their books because I get the feeling that I will like the other titles as well. So, I think that's all I really have to say. Wow, a video under 25 minutes, what's that about? And I'll leave you there. I was just really, really excited to have read a book that absorbed me so much. Did I say that right? I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. Thank you for bringing me back to my childhood, which I have definitely spent a lot of time trying to like distance myself from because as I said, I always wanted to get away from Florida, like grow up, get out of Florida, that was my goal. And now I do miss it. And um, don't know when I'll be back because of everything that's going on. I was supposed to be back literally this week. I would have been home. Um, for a visit and to go to Megacon and meet the Hobbits. 
from Lord of the Rings, and I was so excited about that. Obviously, it's been cancelled. So, anyway, life goes on, and uh, we keep reading. And I think I might read Imaginary Friend next by Stephen Chbosky. He wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, I've just asked my mom if she is ready to read this as well so we can have like a little book club across the Atlantic Ocean um, because she bought the American edition for me back home and I got this one in London when I met Stephen Chbosky, which I think I'll save that story for next time. So I will talk to you next time. Thanks for sticking around and watching and um, being supportive and cool and I hope you are all doing what you can with what's happening right now. Um, it's, it's a lot to deal with but I really hope you are reading books, um, drinking hot chocolate if you want to. I don't know, that sounds good right now. I've been eating a lot of breakfast sandwiches. I'm rambling, so um, talk to you later. This is like a voicemail now. Okay, bye.